This is what Henry Blackaby says in Experiencing God Day by Day devotional for this morning. If you are sensitive to what God is doing around you, He will clearly speak through you through His activities. You will know that God is at work because of what you will see ar around you. It will astound you and the human power and wisdom will not explain it. Are, are you seeing this, his wonderful, astounding surprises? Or could you have, like so many, boxed God in? Maybe, maybe it wasn't your fault. Maybe you got hit by one too many difficulties and, and the theology of God that you were taught, were taught by some very well-meaning people about how God should work. That, that really there's not going to be a whole lot of fancy, fancy things. No demon possession unless the Oakland Raiders get the ball. I mean, I mean, I mean if when, when they um, lose the football. Um, but, but God, he, he knows he'll, exactly how it works. You just work really hard. You suffer really hard. There'll be some blessings, but don't worry. It'll be, all be in heaven. Oh, but that's like living the Christian life in safe mode. Minimal expectations, minimal performance, and not knowing that God is working around you to astound you. It's sort of like this guy. He opens up the Sunday paper and he sees talking dog for sale. And so he says, I'll bite. So he calls the number and the guy answers, yes, this is pastor so-and-so. Oh, oh, pastor, are you selling the talking dog? He goes, yes, just come on over. So he goes over to the pastor's house, knocks on the door, and, and the pastor said, well, I'm sure you want to get the dog. It's 150 bucks, but I'm sure you want to hear the dog talk. So he goes, yeah, sure. So the dog runs right between his legs and says, hi, I'm Ralph the talking dog. You know, me and my master, we used to do wonderful things for God. We used to go on the mission field and I would talk and, and all the children would come to know God and it'd be wonderful. And the pastor went, oh man, you know what? 75 bucks, take the dog. And the guy said, why? Because my dog even lies. <laughs> that you've gotten to a point you don't even recognize that God is working anymore. Don't call me Naomi, which means pleasant, she told them. Instead, call me Mara, which means bitterness. For the Almighty has made my life very bitter for me. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me home empty. Why should you call me Naomi when the Lord has caused me to suffer? And the Almighty had, set, had sent such tragedies, Ruth 1, 20 to 21. No one would have faulted Naomi. She never gave up on God, by the way. She just had stopped believing that he was a good God. And so the Naomi's of today create a Christian life that minimizes getting too involved. You know, you go to church on Sunday, praise God, but you don't share your deep hurts. You don't get too close. You don't open yourself up too much. Minimal expectations means minimal disappointments. And you can't be disappointed if you don't have any expectations and without knowing, you forbid God from surprising you. No wow, no wonderment, no joy. Oh, what a loss. Oh, what a loss. Not knowing that God has surprises for us. Or, or, or maybe you've done it all right. Maybe you did it by the way God wanted you to. And, and, and maybe you are looking for God to surprise you, but man, it isn't happening. And it's not that you feel weak. It's, it's really not that you feel disappointed or even too discouraged. But gosh, I could use some good surprises once in a while. I mean, your spouse, your child still isn't a believer and you still have some unreconciled relationships. You are still still struggling financially while your friends get cost of living raises your living just rises i mean you're kind of happy for them that they go to vegas and get something but mm, wouldn't it be nice if galatians 6 9 
So don't get tired of doing what is good. Don't get discouraged and give up for we will reap a harvest of blessing at the appropriate time. Pastor Lavetti, one of the Fijian pastors some of you have heard about and, and, and met. His church was comfortable. It, it had gotten to a comfortable size. And, and yeah, I would say, I mean, Lavetti was out doing some mission work and the church people were praying and all that. And, but they got in deep trouble when their major donors, their major tithers lost their jobs or had to move. And the church truly was at a very crucial point whether they were going to survive. And so they did the only thing that at that point desperate Christians would do. They fasted and they prayed. And they fasted and they prayed and they fasted and they prayed months on end. And then something slowly seemed to happen to there are people from the community that just started to come to their churches, and I would share with you some of the awesome blessings, but let me share just one that his brother John shared with me. We went to the, to the conference, and of course there were there a handful of the people from Nareri Baptist Church. But John was saying that, hey, let me tell you something. A week ago, we didn't, we didn't know if we could go. We didn't have enough money. Because see, they were in Suva and Nandi is four and a half hours away. We didn't have, we didn't know if we could do it, Hale. So we continued to fast and pray because we believe God wanted us to be, be here at this conference. And, and as I was counting, uh, or, or Asinata, his wife, was counting, this woman had written this large amount. And it, it kind of took their breath away. And they said, wow, this is, this is really unexpected. But they didn't have enough. And so they continued to pray and fast. And the Sunday did, before, they did something no good Baptist church would do. They invited an Assembly of God preacher to preach at their tiny garage church. And right before the Assembly of God preacher ends his sermon, he says to them, I, I don't know why I have to do this, but I got to do this. He breaks out his checkbook, and he writes a check which would be just enough to cover the conference fees and the bus ride to the conference. And they're in awe as they continue to pray. And, and I got to speak there, there uh, one of the Sundays there, and, and I had spoken there. There were 10 people one time when I spoke, but this time in their, in their tiny garage converted church, the kids were actually at my feet. I kind of felt like Jesus, you know. And they were saying, I'm sorry, Hill, but, but many of our members aren't here. They're at the Hibiscus Festival. But, but as far as the garage could extend, you could see there are people there standing up 